Hello, and welcome to the first module called Introduction to the Standards as part of our ongoing series of modules around building literacy and social studies. This professional development is traditionally provided statewide in every AEA. We are recording these webinars to provide more access to this professional development, either through an individual setting, through a PLC or department setting, or to folks who want to um, provide this professional development in a large group um, setting to social studies teachers. This module is an introduction to the ELA literacy standards that are specific to history and social studies 612. The materials referenced in this webinar can be found linked um, where you found the webinar recording. If you are interested in using social media in order to share your learning around this webinar or any other webinars, please use the hashtag IA Social Cities. If you are doing this webinar in a large group setting, in the materials you will find a, uh, some information about doing clock partners. Clock partners are a great way to um, work with a variety of people in a large group setting. Please look for that under the materials available. This module focuses on the development, purpose, and structure of the Iowa Core Literacy Standards for History and Social Studies 612. As a result of the session today, participants will be able to describe the purpose and development of the ELA Literacy Standards for History and Social Studies, identify the critical components of the standards and what they mean, and reflect on how to teach using the standards. If you are doing this individually or in a large group setting, one of the things that we first want you to do is think about how familiar you already are with the Iowa Core Literacy Standards for History and Social Studies. Either think um, to yourself or think on a piece of paper, or if you're in a large group setting, um, do the line up activity that we have here, where you physically form a line within the room in order to see where people fall on the continuum of their knowledge. Before we get started learning about the literacy standards for history and social studies, take a few minutes to think about what you already know about the standards. Then think about what you want to know about the standards, either something that you're curious about or holes that you have in your knowledge about the standards. This is where you may want to pause the webinar um, to allow your PLC or large group setting time to process and think about um, these, what you already know and what you want to know. Before we get started with some additional information about the standards, we're going to talk about the background of the Iowa Corps and how it came to be legislatively. The Iowa Corps came to be through multiple legislative acts. In 2005, Senate File 245 introduced a voluntary model high school um, set of standards in literacy, math, and science. Senate File 588 in 2007 extended this to K-8 and added social studies and 21st century skills to this voluntary set of standards. It was not until 2008 that it filed 2216, extended this and made Iowa Corps mandatory for all students K-8 in the areas of literacy, math, science, social studies, and 21st century skills. In 2010, the Common Core in Literacy and Math replaced the Iowa Core in Literacy and Math, and up to 15% was added with Iowa-specific additions. So currently, we have Literacy and Math standards that came to be in 2010. We have science standards that were recently passed in 2015, the Next Generation Science Standards, and we have social studies standards that are under review currently in 2016. 
we're going to take a minute to watch um, a video by National Teacher of the Year, Sarah Brown Wesseling, learning to read the core of you from 30,000 feet. This is where you might learn some of the things that you had questions about um, a few slides ago around what you want to know about the standards. This video is going to give an overview of the standards in general. And um, when the video is done, if you are doing this in a large group setting, you may want to turn to a partner um, or at your table group and talk about what um, was new information for you and what are the implications of these standards in a social studies classroom. Welcome to Let's Chat Core. My name is Sarah Brown Wesling. I'm a high school English teacher at Johnston High School in Johnston, Iowa, but I also am teacher laureate for Teaching Channel. And here at Teaching Channel, we are working really hard to give you resources in which to come to terms with the core. So this is one of the several webinars that we're going to offer in short, manageable pieces to help you feel more confident about the way in which you understand the core. Our goal today is really to learn how to read the standards. Um, by the end of our time together, I would love for you to be able to have a, a greater sense of confidence when you come to look at the document, as well as a, as a greater perspective. As a little history about the core, it was unveiled in July of 2010. And uh, at that time, two different organizations have really come together to try to make sense of how to elevate the learning of all students in the country. The National Governors Association, as well as the Council of Chief State School Officers, otherwise known as CCSSO, came together in order to create these standards. Uh, and they did this in, in some ways because they knew that other countries that were experiencing a great deal of success had a very clear set of standards in which to follow. And so this website, um, www.corestandards.org, is a wonderful resource if you want to know more about the history of the standards. Along with the standards themselves is the assessment component. And this component uh, leaves a lot, um, a lot of questions for us still because it's still in progress. The assessments are still being written. So there are some things that we do know for sure about the assessments. One of the things that we know is that every state that has adopted the Common Core State Standards belongs to one of two assessment consortiums, either the Smarter Balanced or the Park Assessment Consortium. Both of these consortiums are working to create assessments that give us some terminology that you may or may not be familiar with. But as we are learning about these assessments, you're probably going to hear words like computer-aided testing or CAT testing, which means that uh, a lot of the assessments will be delivered um, on the computer. Uh, we also are hearing terms like next generation assessments, which means that these are trying to be different than what we have understood about standardized tests in the past. Also implicit in these assessments is an aim to have a formative component, which means that students would practice the assessment uh, as they go along before they give the final summative piece. As I think about the standards, perhaps one of the most important epiphanies for me has been to understand that common doesn't mean the same and that the standards are not curriculum for us. We hear that phrase, common core state standards, and that word common stands out. And a lot of times we think common means that everybody is going to be doing the same thing. Everybody's going to teach the same thing. or It's going to be on the same page on the same day. There are only certain la science labs people will be able to do, and, and that's not true at all. Because what common means is that we are all working towards a common goal. It means that we are going to start using common language in order to talk about what our students are learning. But the standards themselves are not curriculum. The standards are very skill based and curriculum is what makes um, makes our work unique. So the curriculum that is in your district is not going to be the same curriculum that is in my district. So while we are all working towards the same common 
um, end in mind how we get there, those curriculums, the vehicles that we take to travel that road are going to be very different and very individualized to our students and our student needs. When I think about reading the standards, just figuring out how to read the standards, I kind of think of putting on a set of glasses or a set of lenses. And this first set of lenses that I would use are really the lenses that I would use to observe the standards um, in front of me. The standards themselves are divided into two big categories right now. We have the math standards and we have the literacy standards. The math standards read actually a little bit differently than the ELA and literacy standards. So right now, I just want to show you a screenshot of one of the first pages. Okay, that was an overview of the ELA and math standards within the Common Core. Now we're going to look at a later part of this video clip um, that deals specifically with the ELA standards and the, the piece of the standards that are specific uh, to literacy for history and social studies. Now I'm going to talk very specifically just about literacy and not just the English language arts component because this can cause a lot of confusion for people sometimes. They think that uh, English language arts part of the standards means that it's just for English teachers, but the standards really tell us that everybody in the building is responsible for literacy. And so everybody in the building gets reading standards and writing standards. I do need to make sure though that it's clear for us to understand that when we're talking about kindergarten through fifth grade, these are all embedded together. So we don't see the, the social study standards pulled out. We don't see the science standards pulled out. Instead, we see them all together K-5. So when they do get pulled out, we're starting at that sixth grade through 12th grade level. Regardless of what you're looking at, whether it's the reading standards or the writing standards, one of the benefits of the way these are written uh, is that we get the same anchor standards um, all the way from K through 12. So whenever you look at um, any grade level standards, you're going to see that they're organized by these big headings. They're going to be organized by key ideas and details, craft and structure, integration of knowledge and ideas. So this is what the reading anchor standards look like. Next, we have the writing anchor standards. And you can see that, again, it's organized in a very similar fashion. We're just talking about these two large components of literacy. So moving away from looking at the anchor standards themselves, I wanted to offer some of these big shifts in terms of broad strokes that we would see in literacy and English language arts. And all of these shifts are changes that we would see occurring in kindergarten through 12th grade in various ways. So the first thing that we would notice is that the standards are telling us that we have to teach more nonfiction, that students have to be able to do more than know the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story, that they need to understand components of nonfiction. Secondly, the standards are, are letting us know that there really is a difference between these ideas of argument and persuasion, and that maybe we've been uh, defaulting to, to persuasion a little too much in our instruction, that maybe we are relying too much on the emotional arguments that we often find in persuasive pieces, instead of maybe the, the logical, uh, rational arguments that we oftentimes find in argumentative pieces. The core is going to require us to integrate. It would be incredibly, incredibly difficult to manage all of the standards themselves if, if we just saw them as isolated events in the student's life. We don't really want to put all of these standards into little check boxes for students to mark off or for teachers to mark off. And so we want to be sure that we are integrating them whenever we can. Students are going to be asked to ground their thinking and textual evidence everywhere in these standards. And this is really crucial because so often students can talk about how they feel about something or their reaction to something. And while that's a good entry point, uh, we want their exit point as students to be grounded in what they've read. Our text can no longer be in isolation. This means the day of the, of the parade of text is over. Um, you know, from my experience, that was we, we are introduced to a book, we read it, we take a quiz, a test over the book, and then it kind of exits the class as though it's just in a parade that's gone by. Instead, the, the books and the texts that we, we bring into our classrooms have to be able to talk to each other. And finally, there is this role of text complexity in the core, which means that we have to be very 
thoughtful about the text that we put in front of our students to make sure that they are meeting their needs. Well, I could go on and talk in greater depth about all of these right now. I'm going to save that for some other webinars that you would be able to tune into and get more background and more practical application of each of these components. So as we kind of look back at the webinar today, um, a few ideas stand out. First of all, we want to remember that standard is not a common purpose. Um, that we want students to be able to think like mathematicians and that for literacy and ELA teachers, primary texts have become really important and the evidence that, you, that they use to talk about them is equally as crucial. As a teacher too, I also am on my own journey in understanding the core. And because of that, I know that this is an ongoing process. So we have more discussion that we would like to offer and more resources that we would like to share in other webinars that will continue to be available on teachingchannel.org. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Okay, so that was just a little bit from Sarah Brown Wesley. I'm learning to read the core from a 30,000 foot view. Now go back to the explore section where you talked about and thought about um, what you already know about the core and what you wanted to know about the core and see if what you learned in the video helped answer your questions. Okay. Getting back, the next thing that we're going to do is dig into the standards that are specific to literacy in history and social studies. So if you're doing this in a large group setting, you might want to look for your Abraham Lincoln partner if you chose to do clock partners at the beginning of this webinar. If not, then open up the ELA uh, literacy standards for history and social studies. You can access these either through the link provided at the bottom uh, of the webinar or by going to www.iowacore.gov and clicking on literacy and then once you open the document the standards specific to literacy in history and social studies are at the very bottom of the document um, so once you find those standards if you go to the handouts available that are connected to this webinar there is an activity called the treasure hunt activity the purpose of this activity is to give people a background into the architecture of the standards. This is going to give you or your group um, a chance to dig into the standards themselves, but also sort of the document as a whole and the writer's intention behind the standards. So work on completing the treasure hunt activity. This might be a great place to pause the webinar, do the activity, and then within your group um, or small group or large group, um, talk about what was new learning for you and um, how does this apply then to a social study classroom. So one of the things uh, that the treasure hunt uh, sort of uh, got to was having you think about what the standards actually mean. And we get that question a lot. When we look at a standard, this standard is from the reading standards for history and social studies. This is standard number one in grades nine through 10. And it says site-specific textual evidence to support analysis of primary and secondary sources, attending to such features as the date and origin of the information. So one of the really critical things when we're talking about implementing standards is to make sure that people actually know what the standard is really getting to. What does that, that statement, that standard actually mean? And what is it asking um, students to know and be able to do? So what we want you to do within uh, this activity is to really think about the unpacking of this particular standard. So a helpful way to think about that is to highlight three of the key words within this particular standard. What are the verbs that you see within the standard and what is it really asking um, students to be able to do? So first, either by yourself or within your group, have a conversation about the three key words that are sort of unpacking the standard in terms of what it's asking students to know and be able to do. 
then we would like you to think about what does this look like in a social studies classroom, especially with the analysis of primary and secondary sources that we would want to see in a social studies classroom. Once you've done that, discuss as a large group um, how this um, would look in, in grades 9 through 10, and then also look at the standards connected to this 6, 8, and then 11, 12, and see how the standard um, increases in complexity or decreases in complexity um, at the 6-8 level and increases in complexity at the 11-12 level. So, in building off of that initial unpacking of that particular standard, we would like you to now go to page 77 through 84. This is the section of the standards that deals specifically with history and social studies. Choose one of the reading or writing standards, different from the one you just did, and highlight those three key words within the standard that helps unpack its meaning. If you're doing this on your own, think about um, how those three words help unpack that particular standard. And if you're doing this with a small or large group, share the, what you have highlighted with your elbow partner to think about um, whether that um, unpacking is helpful and what, it, what this particular standard that you've looked at would look like in a social studies classroom. So now we're going to look at the set of literacy standards for history and social studies um, as a whole. There are a list of 20 words and concepts provided as part of the webinar materials, and each word is a summary of one of the reading and writing standards. And so the purpose of this activity is to really help you think about how this, uh, how each standard is sort of unpacked. And what we'd like you to do is take each of those words or concepts and match them to one of the standards. This is, the purpose is to help you think about um, how these uh, unpacking connects with um, each standard. This might be a good place to pause the webinar to make sure that uh, you give yourself or your group time to process this activity. So thinking about the standards as a whole that you just examined after you've done your matching with each of those 20 concepts or words and matching them to each standard, getting kind of a, a holistic view of what the standards look like, think about, again, how these apply to a social studies classroom. How would you really get kids to cite specific textual evidence in primary or secondary sources? This is a critical conversation in order to think about implementing the standards. Lastly, as we're closing out this webinar, we want you to think about how are the standards relevant to your teaching. These are literacy standards that are specific to history and social studies. So how are those relevant to what you do day in and day out in your social studies classroom? Also think about what did you learn as a result of this module? Was there new learning? Was this a review of what you already knew? Um, think about what, what did you learn as a result? How might you continue your learning about the Iowa Corps and what questions do you have still sort of rattling around as a result of this webinar? If you have questions, you can contact the Iowa Department of Education Social Studies Consultant, Stephanie Wager at stephanie.wager at iowa.gov. Thank you and feel free to browse the other webinars that are part of this series on building literacy in social studies.